I'd always loved road trips, and the last one I took was supposed to be pretty special. A coast-to-coast -coast bonanza to celebrate ten years of marriage with my amazing husband, Danny. Given I'd been struggling with working on myself after a breakdown last year that led to Danny talking me off a ledge, it was a massive milestone and a nice way to celebrate not only our life together but my progress. He never got the appeal though, so we only spent a portion of the trip together before I went solo. Speeding down barren roads along backdrops of stunningly beautiful mountains and canyons never got old and a breeze flowing in through my rolled down window almost seemed to be in sync with the rhythm of my dedicated road trip playlist. I also always enjoyed driving through the little towns that dotted various nooks and crannies along the highways, and this time was no different. I'd fueled up in a shotgun shack of a gas station and came across one of those towns, its bright green entry signage catching my attention. Welcome to Campstead Creek. Population... 1,374. I slowed down as I passed the sign and traversed a plethora of tight, winding roads leading into the town before eventually coming across the first sign of civilization. Two rows of identical houses adjacent to each other, with a large signpost displaying the street name at the end of the road. I thought about getting out, but opted to keep driving in the hope of finding whatever area of resembling a main street this place had. Not long after, I found it. Rows of stores, again with identical exteriors, selling anything and everything a town of some 1400 could ever need. I parked up and with my stomach growling made my way into the little cafe ahead of me, the jingle of an ornament hanging above the door slightly, startling me as I walked in. A young lady was working the counter with a dejected look on her face and awaited my order without so much as making eye contact. Aya, uh, how you doing? I spoke, attempting to break the silence. No reply. Arm, um, could I please have a bagel and a cappuccino to go? The monotone display, or lack thereof, of emotion remained ever-present, until it didn't. Get back in your fancy big city car and get out of here. Run if you prefer, I don't really care, but get the fuck out of here. I typically take offense at such an unwelcoming, cold attitude, but something in me felt otherwise. Something whispered, no, screamed at me, telling me to heed her advice. I should have listened. Oh god, I should have listened. After my odd escapade at the coffee shop, I decided I would try to interact with some of the other townsfolk. I suppose I wanted to leave the place with a better image of it. Not that I hadn't had my fair share of bad experiences in smaller towns, mind you. I drove a little bit further down Main Street and came across an interesting looking building. It was the only one down that street so far that wasn't identical to the others and immediately grabbed my attention. Campstead Creek Senior Center, a place for all. As I walked through the massive double doors leading into the building, the receptionist greeted me with a bright smile on her face. Nice change from the coffee shop lady, I quietly thought to myself. I found myself relaying the obvious lie that I was looking for a place for my grandma to stay and wanted to look around before deciding. She asked if I wanted a guided tour, but I declined in favor of walking through for myself. The oddity of it all was immediately apparent. While there were facilities for older people, the vast majority of the place was clearly catered towards able-bodied, far younger people. I'd walk into a room only to find weathered faces of the young as opposed to the elderly. Beyond a certain point, I took it upon myself to spark up a conversation with one of them, if only to satisfy the burning curiosity I had. Hey, you okay? I asked the mid-thirties looking man who was staring out the window beside me. Fine, he spat without skipping a beat, his southern drawl pouring through even that single word. What's your name? Samuel. But yuck. I don't even know. But you can call me Sammy. Okay, Sammy. I'm Luke. 
Nice to meet you. Are you here to visit someone or something? Nah, I spend most of my time here. We all do. Senior center and all that, you know? But man, I haven't seen many seniors if I'm going to be honest with you, Sammy. He took a long draw of the cigarette poised between his fingers before turning to face me for the first time. You still don't know, do you? I mean, you must have been the first outsider I've seen here in ages that you still don't know. Know what? I asked with a confused look distorting my face. Lukey boy, I'm going to keep it real honest with you. This town ain't what you think it is. You see, death ain't what we fear around these parts. It's life. Endless fucking life, man. His deep blue eyes gazed into mine, almost as if he was trying to read my soul itself. Ah, uh, endless life, I said. Can't make it much clearer for you. Can't explain it either. A couple decades back I was born here and all I've ever been taught and known is that life here doesn't end. Sure, we grow old and stuff, but we don't die. Can't die. I don't know. My heart sank with terror. Part of me wanted to believe I was being played for a fool, but that same gut feeling overwhelmed my senses. It wasn't screaming any longer. It didn't even need to, because my being was enveloped by it. And my lack of reply to the revelation prompted him further. Man, you can believe me, or you can think of me as some stupid small town fucker. But if you want to see for yourself, you should take a look inside the room at the other end of the hall. And with that, he turned his back on me and resumed the gazing from earlier. Maybe I should have walked out of there, pretended none of it was true or even possible. But again, I didn't. The room mentioned attracted me with invisible waves of temptation and curiosity. I walked in to find an empty room devoid of any furnishings beyond a massive display across the wall at the far end. It was a timeline of everything that had happened to the town so far. Rather, a timeline of the townsfolk's desperate attempts to escape what had happened to them. In 1907, the fate that befell them first became apparent. Nobody, not even those well within triple-digit ages, was dying. Their physical conditions deteriorated in the same manner they typically do, and yet death evaded the townspeople. Grossly elderly men and women watched each other decompose into unrecognizable husks of meat and bones, whilst they begged for death as the sick younger men and women were ravaged by all of the symptoms of fatal diseases, except the final one. A few years later, the first mass suicide was planned and executed. Dozens of elderly and infirm townsfolk hung themselves across a great many trees dotted around the edges of town and witnesses were forced to watch and record the terrible situation at hand. And yet they remained alive. Next were left with rope burns and brains with concussions, but they remained alive. Over the course of the many decades since, many further mass suicides and even cullings by distraught friends and family members have been attempted. Still, though, life in Campstead Creek marches on. My departure from the town remains hazy, as does the rest of my road trip. But I finally understand the words of the young lady at the coffee shop, flashing images of the poor people who tried to escape their inevitable fates, began to pierce every waking moment, and eventually my dreams and nightmares too. Sleep has been difficult to come by, and I've found that my mental struggles have worsened significantly. A few weeks ago, it all became too much, and I impulsively slipped my neck into a rope hanging from the cellar beneath our home. I'd do anything to stop feeling the fear that enveloped my life. The note I wrote my husband had ink splotches all over it after my tears found their way down my cheeks. I felt so guilty, and yet I couldn't help myself. The world went black as my breathing slowed to a crawl and eventually to nothing at all. The doctors said I should have died, that I had luck on my side, a guardian angel. I know better.
What's up, y'all? It's the, your favorite ginger, the soulless. In this episode, just real quick, I want to take a few minutes of your time to show you the progress on the Horror Stories channel and how all of you that have subscribed to me and that watch my videos consistently have seriously helped me out. This is just the last 28 days. Look at that watch time right there. 121.2 hours. That's crazy. The amount of views that the channel has gotten, even if it's not getting that many subs. That's still a huge number. The goal to be able to do uh, super fan stuff is 500 subscribers. And the goal to be able to actually get paid for my videos is much more than that. It takes a thousand subs and I have to have 4,000 public watch hours. The gaming channel sitting at 153 views, 39.7 hours of watch time, which is pretty good considering I've been putting most of my effort into this channel lately. That's not a whole lot compared to my other channel, but thank you all for watching. Share the video with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your loved ones. Thank you so much for watching.